Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is Fair Value Finder, and today we're taking a look at a chemical company. They manufacture and sell chemicals, bio-based fuels, bio-based specialty chemicals uh, within the U.S. And they specifically deal with both chemicals and biofuels. Uh, so it's an interesting company, uh, especially something from Missouri. Uh, there aren't a whole lot of public companies from here. But right now we're looking at the chart. We're seeing that they came to market back in 2007 and they've grown quite a bit. I mean, they were literally nothing back in 2009. Uh, they hit a peak in 2021 of $13.92, and they've dropped back down to about half of that over the course of the last couple of years. Uh, mostly trading sideways, nothing huge movement out of this, and we're going to take a look at why that is. Because it definitely looks like it's undervalued, but there's other factors that play into that. So here we have the scorecard for the company. Uh, we're looking at a... Fair value of right around $15, a current value $17.20, so definitely is trading at a discount to the fair value. The margin of safety is 30% here because I see a lot of risk, and that's still putting the uh, undervalued line at $10.50, which is right about the 52-week high. On the higher end, when we'd want to reevaluate, around $16. And it's gone as low as $5.79 over the course of last year. Uh, discounted cash flows is coming up with $22.55 because they seem to have pretty strong cash flows. And this is a company where there are no analysts who cover it. So it's kind of difficult. And we could dig super deep into the numbers if we're interested in it. But I'm not sure about that after I've looked everything over uh, broadly. Earnings yield 4.31%. It's okay. We kind of want something higher than five in this market. 36 cents is what we'd be looking for in EPS for it to be a decent value. Uh, they came in at 35 last year, but with year over year shrinkage in their earnings per share, I, I'm being generous by only taking it down to 23 cents this next year. We'll see what it does, and hopefully they can have a bit of a bounce back the following year. But with no analyst projections and uh, us not digging super deep into the numbers, those are kind of a shot in the dark. We'd have to pull up the annual reports and see what the different streams of revenue are and where we think that there's potential growth there. Cash flow, like I said, this is very strong. Last year, 12% yield. Average, 10% yield. Uh, very good. Dividend. Uh, currently yielding 3.34, average 2.5. They don't raise their dividend at all. They just hold it flat at $0.24 cents a year. Uh, payout ratio, 68% off the most recent earnings. So honestly, if they do come in with the EPS that we're talking about here, uh, they're going to be underwater with that dividend. So I, I don't know that it's really safe. Uh, they need to get their margins in check, and we'll get to that. ROE, ROI, ROA, uh, none of these are really good. Um, it looks like they have the best return on their equity. So that tells me that they have super high assets and quite a bit of debt, but nothing too crazy. A 0.26 uh, debt to equity. So definitely something that they can handle. ROI is definitely not good at all, though. For a dollar invested in the company, they're only making back two cents. Uh, definitely not good. And that's because of these margins over here. Gross margin of 7.32% last year, average of 16 and a half. Those are very low margins, especially gross margins. A net 3.84. So we can see these dropping year over year here. 2019, net margin for 43, then 42.8, 8.2, 3.8. Huge drops every single year. Hopefully they can hold at at least this three level, but we'd really want to see them get it up to 10 on the net. The gross, they need to get that up towards the 30 range that they had back in 2019. If they can get that back up to 36, it's definitely going to be something that we can take a deeper look at. But until then, it it's probably going to be a waste of our time. Revenue growth. 
again, there's no analysts, so we're going to have to just go with – they've been picking up the growth more recently. Let's just say they come in with what they've been averaging over the last three years at 24.5% and go with that. Earnings per share, we saw the huge drop year over year, and I'm even slowing that down going forward. So uh, it's not looking good on that front. Cash flows, this one's interesting. They had a huge year in 2020, uh, 91.9. Back in 2019, 27.7. 2022, 47.7. So the cash flows look good. They're basically holding right around 10% to 13%, aside from 2020, where they had that huge uh, jump, where likely due to the sale of assets. And we can see that the assets have been dropping and slowed down uh, more recently in that drop. Share count, they're just issuing 0.02% every single year. We'd like to see that at least flat. With the current value of these shares being so low, buying it back would be better. But it looks like they're trying to free up cash between the sale of assets and the issuance of shares. Liabilities, they were shrinking, but they started to grow them again. And the dividend, like we said, they hold them flat. So if we use these numbers, 24% revenue growth, 0.02% issuance of shares every single year, selling their ass 10% of their assets every single year, and growing their liabilities by 3%, kind of their more recent numbers, uh, we'd be looking at numbers such as this. So the fair value in three years would then be $16.41, $1.41 higher than the current fair value, 20%. The market average, 8 to 10%, we'd want like 24, probably more since it's so risky. So that's a little low. Over the course of five years, uh, we'd want this to be, well, what we'd be looking at would be $22.69 for the fair value, uh, $7.66, 51% return. So that is looking a little bit better, uh, likely because of this big revenue growth, which hopefully they're able to keep up, but they need to improve their margins as well. Like the story here is just declines when we look at a lot of these numbers, aside from the revenues. Revenues have nice growth, but the cost of goods is growing even faster than the revenues are. Net gross EBIT, everything is just showing a decline, uh, not looking good. The balance sheet declines across the board with assets, tangible assets. Tangible book value does look really good with the huge amount of assets that they have, but at the rate that the assets are declining, uh, that might not stay the case for too much longer. And liabilities kind of look like they're just flat. Cash flows, like we said, these do look pretty good. That huge jump in 2020. Aside from that, we do see some decent growth year over year. Coming in with huge revenue growth and holding their cash flow yield. Dividends, they don't raise it at all. It's just kind of holding there. And across the board, what we're looking at for the most part is just declines. Earnings declining from $30 in value to 4 The share price declining from 12 to 7 The dividend holding flat. Fair value of the stock, for the most part, holding flat since 2021. Not a whole lot of movement here. It's been in the $14, $15 range. And the cash flows are the strongest thing for this company. So what's the what's the bull case here? What are we looking at? I'd like to see them lower their expenses and grow their margins because their revenue growth is great. Their balance sheet looks great aside from the shrinking assets. But with that terrible ROA, probably in their favor to do that. They honestly might want to look at stopping those dividend payments since it's getting so close to their actual earnings and maybe start looking at issue or buying back shares rather than issuing them. And I mean, we can follow along with this stock. If it's something that you guys are interested in, drop a like and I'll make sure that it's added to the list where we follow up on the earnings. But for the fair value, what we'd be looking at essentially is 48 cents in earnings per share. Cash flows, 
Cash flow per share of 36 cents, which at this point would be 15.7. Again, cash flows look great for the company. And a balance sheet, uh, $2.40 of net assets per share, which would be $105 million in net assets, which they definitely beat. So I am definitely interested in this stock. Cash flows are great. Balance sheet is great. Uh, dividends at a good point now, but again, I don't think that they should continue to pay that. What they really need to do is work on those financials. So I'm going to put it on a watch list because I don't want to give it a rating yet with how things stand at the moment. I mean, with these declines, it almost makes me want to say sell, but I need to listen to their earnings reports, read through the annual reports to actually see what's going on here. So I'm going to say interest is peaked, uh, put it on watch list, and we'll see how things go from there. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and you subscribe so that you can see what else we're able to find out of this company. Uh, like if it's one that you're interested in, and I'll catch you next time.